when you think of NASA, you probably think of space. But did you know that NASA is also responsible for the technology behind this? And this. Yep, even those. For more than 50 years, the technology that has supported astronauts' work in space has also had a major impact on everyday life on Earth. And that work continues here at Johnson Space Center, where new technology is being developed and tested that could one day be in every future house. Hey, Ryan. Hey, Ross. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Welcome to Mission Control. What an engineer's dream. It is pretty incredible, I have to say, to work here every day. I get to work for the space station. I get to determine when we launch vehicles to the space station, what we pack in them, and what the crew does with them on orbit. I mean, it's amazing the fact that you get to talk to astronauts in space 250 miles above us. It's amazing. Yep. Yep, and a lot of people think about Space Station as a research vessel, but in fact, there are actually six people living on board the Space Station. That's their home. That's where they live every day. And I have someone, Scott Tingle, on board the Space Station right now who wants to talk to you. No way. Are you ready to meet him? Yeah. Let's do it. All right. All right. Okay, I am ready to go. Hey Scott, Ross Chathui here. I'm so excited to meet you. It's great to meet you too. Thanks for, uh, for coming in and welcome to board the International Space Station. I really wanted to know, what's it like to be in space? Oh, well, the, uh, you know, physically being here is, uh, is really cool. It's, um, you know, you get to do stuff like this, just kind of float around and, <laughs> you know, turn sideways and, and float, like things you've, you've dreamed of doing as a, uh, as a child. <laughs> And uh, riding the rocket is extremely cool, and uh, and being up here uh, with all these in incredible systems uh, is really cool. Well, all the luxuries we take for granted here on Earth, you know, oxygen, water, you know, sunshine, we have all that, you know, you don't really get that in space. But that's true, and it's a, it's a little bit of an adaptation to, uh, to, to do that, and uh, so to, to get the water and continue having the water, it, it actually takes work, you don't just can't just always go to the faucet and turn on the water and expect there to be good water without having to do a little bit of work every week to make sure that the systems are working right and uh, and it has the right balance to be able to uh, to turn all of our wastewater into uh, drinking water. Well, Scott, I gotta say thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for your service, and uh, I hope to see you on the ground in a little bit here in Houston. Uh, thanks for coming to visit, visit us up here on the uh, space station, and uh, thanks for taking the time, and thanks for being interested. And I'll, uh, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Thanks, safe travels. So? That was insane, totally insane. To talk to Scott in space, I mean, it's bucket list. That's in indescribable. It's pretty awesome, right? Yeah. So how would you like to go to the space station? Wait, are you serious? I'm serious. Okay, I can't launch you on a rocket, but I can show you the full-scale mock-ups we use to train the crews before we send them on board the space station. Yeah. I can show you all the systems that we use to keep them alive and make it a home. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. It's like a little space house tour. All right. So this is the training facility? This is it. This all is right. where we train the astronauts to live on the space station. So Behind cool. you, you can see all the life-size modules exactly like they are on orbit. So cool. Over here, this is like our classroom setting where we train the astronauts how to live aboard the space station okay. in our life-size racks that house each one of our different systems. Okay, and what is the system called? Well, like Scott was talking about, we need regenerative systems on the space station for our environment. So here we have our regenerative environment control life support systems. Got it. This is my friend Laura, and she is a life support engineer. Hi, Laura. Nice Hi. to meet you. Nice to meet you. So water is one of the essential uh, elements for humans to live. Mm -hmm. On the International Space Station, about 90% of that water is recycled, and it all starts here in the urine processor assembly. So the urine comes from the toilet, and it's plumbed here. The heart of it is called vapor compression distillation system. Uh, and so what it does is it, because we're in, uh, we have no gravity on the space station, uh, it rotates this drum here at a very high speed to keep the water to the outside, uh, and then we use low pressure and heat to uh, evaporate that water off of the, um, the surfaces. So the good water evaporates and the bad salts stay so you're, behind. So you're basically boiling the clean, safe drinking water out exactly of the right. urine. Exactly right. And then we collect that water and we send it over to the water processor, Okay. which is here. Wow. And this uses a system of filters to polish this water into drinkable water so that yesterday's coffee becomes today's coffee. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I love about it is that there's places on this earth that don't have access to clean, safe drinking water, and they have plenty of wastewater. The fact that you can take this technology and take the waste and convert it into safe, clean drinking water, love it. 
you're exactly right. There are actually developing countries on Earth that is using this technology. Awesome. All right, Ross, come on in. Welcome wow. to the space station. Oh, I feel like I'm in space. This is crazy. Pretty cool, and complex. right? complex. <laughs> Very complex. This is our laboratory module. Okay. If you look back behind you, that's our crew quarters or their bedroom. Okay. A couple more research modules. Down that way is the kitchen. We call it the galley and the exercise room. All right. But right now, I want to introduce you to my friend, John. He's hey, going to talk about the Howdy. oxygen system. Okay. One very important thing with life support systems is ventilation. We have to circulate the atmosphere within the space station to make it comfortable for the crew. Mm -hmm. One way we do that, we have air intakes on the deck here, and we have air returns uh, on the overhead, and that circulates the air within the space station. So you have constant circulation going all that the time? That is correct, all the time. All right, I'm dying to know, how does it work? On Earth, we breathe in oxygen and exhale carbon dioxide and water vapor. Plants then take that carbon dioxide in convert it back to oxygen, and send it back into the air. On the International Space Station, the astronauts breathe the same way, but without plants, the carbon dioxide would overtake the space station and make it impossible to breathe. To counter that, we have created an oxygen generation assembly. It sends a jolt of electricity into the water, effectively splitting it into oxygen and hydrogen. That process is called electrolysis. The oxygen is then sent back through the air system and the hydrogen is vented outside the space station alongside the carbon dioxide. So where does the water come from? So believe it or not, the water actually comes from the water reclamation system that you just saw. The crew can use that water for washing and drinking, but we can also use the water for making oxygen. And this system then circulates the air to control temperature and humidity as well. Wow. It's freezing cold in space. So there are lines of ammonia outside that collect cold and transfer it to water glycol lines inside. The air then pushes across the cold pipes and keeps the station cool. All the mechanicals on board generate a lot of heat, so the air system primarily cools the space station. Since the air has moisture in it, including the water vapor exhaled by the astronauts, it is forced to condense when it hits the cold pipes. That condensate is collected and then sent back to the water reclamation system. It sounds just like an air conditioner. You take warm air across a cold coil and get condensation to form. That is correct. And on Earth, that water just drains away. But on a space station, we want to collect that condensate and turn it back into drinking water. I'm just amazed at how the systems are all interconnected. And I assume these processes are highly energy intensive. And how do you power it all? Let's step outside. I'll show you. So Ross, over here on the wall, we were just inside one of those little white modules, but you see the blue fins on yeah. either side? Those are photovoltaic solar arrays. So photovoltaic panels to power the entire space station. Yep. I mean, what a perfect place for it. You got no trees, no clouds, no shading, right? Keep in mind, we do have one major obstruction, the Earth. So the space station is revolving around the Earth every 90 minutes. So roughly half the time we're in darkness, half the time we're in light. When we're in the sun, we power directly from the solar rays. When we're in darkness, we power from batteries. I mean, the solar power matches up with battery storage. That's an up and coming trend in my industry. That's good. We've been doing it for 20 years. <laughs> the technology I saw today, it really seems possible to have more people living in space. Absolutely. We have pretty sophisticated systems on the space station to support life, but we still have to launch some critical supplies and supplement with oxygen, a little bit of water, and definitely food. Yeah. If we want to look at extended exploration missions, we really need to cultivate our technologies for the regenerative systems. I mean, you're talking about extended missions to Mars, right? Potentially, yes, but keep in mind, a mission to Mars could be a year and a half in duration. So if we're going to send people to live there, we have to have a fully regenerative system. Right, I mean, what's the most interesting about it is that you guys are working on technology to get to Mars that really have a practical use here on yeah. Earth. I mean, the fact that you guys can harness every bit of energy and resource, utilizing it to the absolute fullest. So thank you very much, Ryan, for the tour. Thank you. I can't wait to see what NASA does next. Stay tuned. You lucky dog. Really You've really always cool. been into space. <laughs> jealous. I am jealous. Well, down here on Earth, we've been talking about moving heat, not making heat for a long time. You know, geothermal and super efficient heat pumps. They're moving heat so efficiently, but they're also using that same principle for other resources, right? For water, for oxygen. There's no oxygen in space, so they know that there's oxygen in water. Yeah. So I can take the oxygen out, pump it back into the space station, and repeat the process. Waste so. nothing. Yeah. So I'm thinking about the systems that you saw up there and how they might translate to down here. We obviously don't have an oxygen problem. Um, I don't know what you think about the urine and whether that conversion is going too far or not, but right. what can we use down here? Right, processing urine into safe drinking water is probably a long way off. But condensate, especially in hot areas of this country, which have huge air conditioning loads, loads and really, really long right. droughts, 
Yeah. You know, the fact that they could take that water and reclaim it for gray water use, right? For toilets and for watering sure. plants. But they could also take it a step further and filter it and use it for potable right. drinking water. Right now, all that water is wasted. Cool. All right. All right. Well, good story. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project. So be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.